Yeah. <clears throat> so good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the next series of talks, which are, we are organizing under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. You know, it is a series of webinars which we have organized, and uh, this is a part of the celebration of. It is a you know intensive country-wide celebration of 75 years of our independence. The glorious you know achievements we have made in this 75 years. We are celebrating those achievements. And this all is to create a very visionary path for India. We have to create a path for India where India can shine and we can revisit what has been our journey and how we have come through where we are today. And it is a collective effort where we can you know, resolve that we have to go to a, make India a powerful India. So this is uh, slightly something about the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. This is a nationwide program which is being held. And there are so many activities which have done. And we in Skill Council have chosen to do the webinars. We want to do host 75 webinars across different sectors where we are working. We are working in the environment, in the waste. We are working in the, you know, in the renewable energy. Now, recently, hydrogen, green hydrogen, net zero, as, as we progress towards more and more objectives, we are taking up activities and we are taking up talks in those areas. And today we have a very interesting talk. I know it is something different, which I, when I looked up the topic, I was delighted because being a microbiologist, I felt very close to this topic. Though being you know, in the administration, I had lost lost link with the labs. But when I saw this and I saw her CV of Dr. Meena, I was very delighted. So it is on bioprocessing and bioeconomic econ economy, economic opportunities for agro residue. Now, this is a very important talk. This is a very important tool for economic as well as social progress. Biotechnology, we know it has come up date. It has come up very much. And then talking about it, how we can use these tools for making different products from agro residues, agro residues, otherwise also they have a lot of utility, they are being used as fodder, they are being used as feed, then they are being used as fuel. But in addition to that, the tools, the biotechnological tools or the bioprospecting, I read that word and I was very you know, enthused by it, that the bioprospects, you know, biorefinery, we know biorefinery is where you have different products, but the bioprospects of agro residues through bioprocessing to make different products, which can be of use as fodder, fuel, and the pharmaceutical industry that has come, that will be very good. So I think her talk is something different from what we have been talking. And this is going to give us a real insight into how we can further make agro residues beneficial in a circular or in a bioeconomy and we can you know use this so welcome dr meena and once again thank you very much for accepting this invitation uh, i would like mr sarvesh to introduce her and uh, then i would like to listen to her thank you very much dr meena once again and welcome thank you it's my pleasure ma'am thank you ma'am it's my pleasure to introduce dr meena krishania Dr. Meena is currently working as Scientist C at Center of Innovative and Applied Bioprocessing Mohale. She is linking bench level R&D. To the application team involving testing for their applications and performance analysis. It's linearity of yield analysis, etc. for tangible outcome to in reality field or, or industrial constraint and uses in Indian scenario. She obtained her PhD from the IIT Delhi and I'm taking care of being lost chemical engineering from IIT Jaipur. She was a applied chemical engineering, renewable bioprocess, bioenergy, and industrial bioprocessing. In 2014, she began working at CIAB, where Dr. Meena has brought in her vision and continued her uh, work on polarization of biomass and its upscaling. Sarvesh, your voice is being lost. Uh, Mr. Ram, please uh, please uh, tell Sarvesh. Uh, I'm audible now? 
Sir, Rish, sir, yes, you are audible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it might I, would, I, would, of it. I would yeah. I would suggest uh, Sarvesh sir to read the profile again. Uh, the reason being, uh, your voice was please. broken in between. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can read the profile again, please. Just a moment, just. I think Mr. Ram, we have still lost him. Ma'am, he's there connected. I'll just connect with him offline. Okay. Give me a minute. <clears throat> Ram, I'm audible now. Yes, now you're audible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, like This is uh, because of uh, technical issues. So uh, again, I like to introduce uh, Dr. Meena. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Meena Krishania. Dr. Meena is currently working as a scientist C at Center of Innovative and Applied Bioprocessing Mohali. She is linking bench level R&D to the application stream involving testing, validating, improving, integrating technologies and processes for their applications. Linearity of yield analysis, et cetera, for tangible out outcome in reality field and uses in Indian scenario. She obtained her PhD from IIT Delhi and MTech in Chemical Engineering from MIT Jaipur. She was assistant professor at Amiti University, Haryana, where she taught applied chemical engineering, renewable biomass, bioenergy, and industrial bioprocessing. In 2014, she began working at CIAB, where Dr. Meena has brought in her vision and continued her work on valorization of biomass and its upper scaling. She invented sustainable bio technologies using ag agricultural byproduct and lignocellulosic biomass. Her work cont contributes to appreciation of industrial constraint by continuously developing technologies and offering better solutions. Her field of interest in chemical engineering, industrial biotechnology, food processing, upscaling. Over six patents have been filed doc with Dr. Meena. Two of them are granted. She has huge number of publication in national and international journal like well, frontier of nut nutrition etc she wrote one book on second generation biofuel from lignocellulosic biomass and four chapter she was also awarded with early career research grant in 2017 best paper award in women scientist and entrepreneur conclave at isf 201 and also represented Indian SEE, Sustainable Energy and Environment Forum, Japan in 2011. She was also awarded with Best Project Award in First Tech Open House 2010 at IIT Delhi. With these words, I'd like to welcome you again on the webinar. Over to you, Dr. Meena. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, a very good afternoon, everyone. And first of all, I want to thank you, Skill Council for Green Job, for giving me this opportunity to speak on this prestigious platform. And I really appreciate, ma'am, your initiatives, efforts for who, efforts for skill development in area of green, sustainable development, renewable energy, and waste management. Why conducting such a, a knowledgeable uh, 75 webinar series? on a celebration with the Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahatsav. So I just want to express my gratitude to whole team and panel members present over here. And uh, thank you uh, for such a, a nice introduction. So my topic, today's topic as already ma'am uh, disclosed that. So I'll share my slides first. So as 
uh, already um, topic has been revealed that we are going to unreveal the intricacies of agriculture residue, bioprocessing and bioeconomy opportunities. So basically our institute name is Center of Innovative and Applied Bioprocessing and uh, we are working in uh, area of primary and secondary agricultural waste to valorize them to make into a value added product products and uh, make uh, uh, via different different approaches of the bioprocessing. So before we begin I, my presentation, I let you know a little bit a brief about uh, the, what is a bioprocess engineering. So bioprocess is a specific process that uses uh, living cells like it can be any microbes, so any bacteria, enzyme, fungus, to obtain the desirable product. So the any uh, agriculture residue with the help of the microbes can be converted into a valuable product. This process is known as a bioprocess. And bioprocess engineering is a specialization of biochemical, chemical, and biotech engineering. And uh, and biotech engineering is also include the designing of processes, reactors, chemical plants for development of products like biofuel, nutraceutical, pharmaceutical, food, feed, chemicals, etc. with the help of microbes. This is not a new branch. We were working from since I think 2400 BCs. So these pictures are clearly depicting that um, this met the protocols were being uh, developed from that era. So these are the pictures from Greece and uh, Holland that they have engraved such protocol of making alcohol and bread. So from that uh, point of, uh, I mean, they have been their ways of writing protocol and now we have different ways to be write a protocols. So it was clear, clearly revealed that the process is not new, the concept is very old, but how can we advance it and how can we further can think very critically or out of box to uh, get maximum uh, benefit out of this and to make a sustainable model. So uh, as in the bioprocessing, there are particularly uh, three, four parameters. One is a pre-treatment and second is upstream and then uh, downstream and then packaging and supply chain. So in pre-treatment, we treat the agricultural biomass to make it to the desirable media for the microbes to consume and form the uh, value added product or product of your interest. So the upstream uh, consider uh, the media preparation and the fermentation strategies. So in upstream, we uh, optimize different parameters like pH, temperature, RPM. So the suitable conditions has been given to the microbes so we can get the desirable, desirable product at good yield. After that uh, uh, production of any uh, value added products, we go for the downstream where we purify or extract your uh, compound in high purity. So in downstream, generally we do purification, crystallization and extractions processes. And then after purifying, we can uh, make different, different products out of this uh, bioprocessing approach, we can make different value added food and feed products, we can make pharmaceutical products, nutraceutical products, we can fuel and any specialty chemicals. So microbes are very vast, uh, very wide range microbes are there. So we have to be very selective or according to which kind of product you want to form. So there are certain examples uh, already as shown in the slide that uh, we already having a commercial product with the same strategy from the my different, different microscopes like for example citric acid we are producing for the food uh, from the aspergillus niger and similarly ethanol we know that the ethanol has been produced with the help of the saccharomyces cerevisia for the fuel so there are certain uh, products which can and uh, can be formed by the help of the microorganisms. 
So the uh, one of the oldest example for the bioprocessing we usually call this the penicillin because the penicillin was being invented by we know that Alexander has invented it and it was being commercially uh, produced in 19th century and now it was being at a very high scale. So somebody has thought uh, very differently to put this approach in a sustainable vi viable approaches to be make so that will not be going to generate any harsh chemicals or uh, any byproducts which having no use. So if we able to make such strategies or such uh, integrated processes, so we cannot able to get any uh, generating any byproduct or any other waste, even though zero waste strategy and giving a very uh, a good product to the uh, India or to society. So when we come on agricultural waste, so in agricultural waste, we have uh, different, different uh, 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 zones. Like first, the abundant, uh, abundantly available in our country, because our country is agricultural waste country and is the crop residues. In the crop residue, these are the basically uh, the leftover of a crop like rice straw, wheat straw, corn straw, barley straw, whatever, whatever the crop you uh, grow according to the season and the leftover is the crop residue. And the second amendment is the food processing residue in the agricultural waste lay because food industry is also a very huge um, a number of uh, uh, waste to gen generate a huge number of waste. So these are sugarcane, bagasse, rice brandy, oil seed cake, rice husk, and the uh, kinu pomace or any fruit pomaces. And then the next is next category is food waste. So any food or uh, fruit waste or any other waste like tree uh, waste, dry leaves, bark, and animals. So these are considered as a agricultural waste. This is a very interesting uh, data, the residue uh, generated and how much we uh, produced surplus and how much we burned. So as uh, our institute is in Punjab and uh, the Punjab state is uh, showing a very good amount of residue generations and along with the surplus and it's also been recorded that the maximum residue also burn in Punjab. The Punjab government is uh, already putting extra efforts and doing great in this area and they have uh, given a very good policies and new machineries has also been available now like happy cedar and those so Apart the Punjab, the other uh, states are also in the line for generating residues. So, uh, by seeing this data, you can clearly uh, make out we having a huge number of residues in our country. So these residue, if we able to treat it or bioprocess it in a particular good way or in an integrated way, we could uh, give a very bio, uh, good bioeconomy to the country. As when we see the major crops are burning is paddy straw, wheat straw, and sugarcane the gas. So as we have seen that these are the states which are generally burning the agriculture residue. And uh, when we see according to the which the sugarcane is giving the maximum uh, generation of residue and, uh, and then followed with the rice and the wheat. So these are the major residues has been uh, produced and burned also. When we see when they are burned, the farmers are burning these residues. So first uh, window is pre-monsoon re residue burning in April and May. And the second window is in October or November. That is a post-monsoon residue burning season. So what is the impact when we burn the agriculture residue? So first of all, we know that it will going to impact the environment. So atmosphere is the biggest concern when we are burning. It will change. It will change the climate. It will also more smoggy and more hazy in that time. The climate and the particulate matters are also increase increase in uh, when we burn the agriculture residues and the pollutants also the uh, gases is also being increasing in the environment. So 
if creating such environment, of course, our health will not going to be uh, good. So this will also going to be bad for our health, specifically our respiratory tracts. So. And then the other major impact of uh, residue burning is on soil. So as we know that uh, when we are burning soil, it will first of all, it will going to destroy all the microbial culture or consortia which is present in the soil. And then the organic carbon is also being burned. So the, doing such um, things or making such things in practice will lose in the soil fertility. So our next crop will going to be hampered uh, due to this and the nitrogen loss, of course, by doing it. So automatically, when we able to uh, hamper this much of uh, things, our economy will not going to be uh, sustained. So we will also decline our economy if we are burning this agriculture residues. So, but why we haven't uh, done anything apart uh, thinking of it, though we have done many technologies, many uh, initiatives have taken, but there are few challenges. So that are basically hurdles, I could say, which are need to be rectified. The first hurdle is abundant agriculture. The agricultural residue is in abundant, a huge amount of agricultural residue present. So which agriculture residue should be go into, uh, which product need to be uh, figured out. And the second is chemical composition of agricultural residue. The agricultural residue having uh, different, different chemical compositions, and though it was in the similar, but some variation there due to the geographical region and morphology of plants. And then collection and storage. The collection and storage is also uh, because the agricultural residue is in uh, wherever they are uh, growing the crops and agricultural residues with the farmers or it was being laying down or somewhere it was not being uh, storage stored properly. And it was also required a huge volume for storage. So it's a big concern how we will collect or how we will make the chain for the collection and storage of agricultural residues. The second concern uh, is in the collection is when we are harvesting, we are harvesting uh, according to the seasons, like this crop is for this season, that crop is for that season. And uh, if we are putting some commercial technology to be upgraded, and if it's dependent on the one crop, then we have the window and what we will do, either we have to store it or we have to shut down. So we have to look, uh, look up such uh, approaches where uh, there, there will be a good collection storage uh, uh, things. And further, we have the uh, two agricultural residues simultaneously can be used. And uh, the next is awareness, uh, because we are not much aware, though now everyone is getting concerned, we are everyone having a very uh, good point of views for uh, uh, sustainable models and how can we efficiently use the new startups are also coming that was also very highly appreciable. And the, but the technologies are there, people are doing good research and they are publishing in a very good papers. But for commerce, we need a technology which having the potential for commercialization. So such really need to come out and such technologies are high in demand so we can use it at that scale. Capacity building, technical manpower, the manpower which knows how to use and valorize and the farmers uh, collaboration is highly required in this area. So other concern is uh, Whenever we are uh, harvesting and then we further uh, collecting it, or we, the government has given many options to the farmers, but the one point always been everybody minds to be uh, come out like how much cost is there to be do that. So we need a process which is a cost effective so everybody can use it and they feel happy also to use it. So available of appropriate machineries are required. 
and the utilization of crop residues because uh, they are in a huge numbers and varieties. So how to be utilize the agriculture residue in how efficient way, because a single product can't be good for the whole agriculture residue. We need to be formulate uh, seeds and how can we further can multiple approaches is required. Not, I, I would say not a single person can go to do it. It need a different interdisciplinary. It need a different skills. It need a different mind of set, critical thinking, who can be actually want to do it. So such uh, things are actually required for us to utilize the agricultural recipe because a single uh, tree cannot make the forest. We all need to be collaboratively work towards it and develop such technologies. And those technologies should be up upgraded time, time to time basis. So we, everybody or every farmer can happily use those technologies as well. Or any entrepreneur wants to uh, put those uh, 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 industries in that area can also be benefited. So as we know that agriculture uh, residues structure is basically it's a lignocellulosic biomass. It contains cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. So uh, generally, uh, the there is if we uh, consider the hardwood, there is a fifty percent of cellulose, twenty five percent of hemicellulose or lignin, and it was vary according to the different agricultural residues. The major concern is the lignin also in this era, which I will discuss in the later slides. And uh, there are several schemes already. We uh, see that they agree from the agriculture residue people are making like fuel, for pulp, paper, biogas, alcohol productions, and several other biofertilizer leather industry. They are using for, uh, still they are using for different uh, approaches for convert this agricultural residue into value added products. So what I suggest from my point of view, the way uh, this area, the, it's a requirement also. There is a lignocellulosic biomass having the three component as we discussed, cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin. It needs a pre-treatment because then it's having a lignin and other uh, chemical structure bounded with each other to degrade it into required a pre-treatment. So for the degradation itself, having a several pre-treatment methods, so you have to choose the appropriate according to the biomass. So it can be converted into the uh, cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin to be segregate the components of the lignocellulosic biomass. So in, uh, there are uh, thermochemical convergence, organosol methods and sacrification with the help of enzyme, you can degrade this lignocellulosic biomass. Further with the help of the microbial or enzymatic conversion, you can convert into value added products like detergent, glycolipids, hydrocarbon alcohols or other value added products. And the lignin, which is a left or because it's difficult to degrade, we have to take it into a different strategy and different way to degrade it or make into other uh, functional molecules. So these need to be a functionalizer. Higher thermo uh, hydrothermal liquefaction is good for it, and it we can further convert into functional molecules for polymeric materials. Because it's, it's very, uh, com uh, I mean, say it's a polyphenol, it's a very uh, complicated, sometimes it's a change with the structure according to the time also, so it needs to be handled in a uh, more consigned, more research is required in this area. So the basically there are a few, uh, uh, all products can be, uh, produced by using the agriculture residue, by using the, a bioprocessing that is the biofuels we can generate biodiesel, biohydrogen, biobutanol, bioethanol, bioenergy like biochars and gas, methane, biogas, biopolymers like cellulose, glucuronic acid. These are few examples. You can even though there are many more you can be produced, just you have to figure out. And the pharmaceutical like probiotic, antioxidant, vitamins, and organic acids. So this scheme is basically an integrated scheme. So we need an integrated lignocellulosic value chain for bioeconomy. So this is the best way we have to think in this way or uh, better than these two, we can 
handle the agricultural residue biomass in a more potentially more uh, economical way. So uh, when we see uh, the paddy straw, because paddy straw, when because our institute in the Punjab, and uh, generally in the headlights of the newspaper, we usually read Punjab paddy and pollution. So it was been uh, linked uh, in every season of uh, burnings. Here. The concern is the paddy straw is uh, uh, is a byproduct of uh, rice residues, uh, rice processing, and then it was been the uh, forty five percent of whole rice plant. The estimated annual production of uh, paddy straw is around 60 million tons. So it's going to be contribute to global warming that is around 28 times higher CO2. So this is really a concern, uh, today's concern for the uh, environment. And so if it will be able to be able to bioprocess it and in a better, better way, we can see many things. So when we see the how much when we are burning rice for in Punjab, how much we are losing. So when we turn, we burn uh, one ton of rice straw, we able to uh, lose 5.5 kg of nitrogen, 1.2 kg of sulfur and phosphorus around 2.5 kg and potassium 25 kg and organic acid, organic carbon is 400 kg. So not this only obviously we are polluting the environment as well so like if we can see the uh, few figures of uh, newspaper cuttings and there we can see one ton of stubble on burning release 2 kg of so2 3 kg of particulate matter 60 kg of carbon monoxide and 14 60 kg of CO2 and 199 kg of ash. So this much of uh, we are basically burning or losing and uh, creating pollution. So this is a scheme which our research group has developed for the rice straw. So initially we have uh, uh, collected the rice straw from our nearby farmers and grind it and pre-treated it. And further, we have separated the hemicellulose and other residue which having cellulose, silica, and lignin. Further, we detoxified and able to make the xylose syrup. Further, with the help of the fermentation, we have made xylitol and these residue further again separated and be able to make other value added products like we can make a biofuel cellulose derivative or other nutraceutical products can be made and this can further we can make resins or fillers or we can advertise etc so this is a scheme which we have uh, published in biosource technology report so when we see that uh, if the rice uh, straw able to make the xylitol, so xylitol is basically a sugar alcohol molecule. It will taste like sugar, but it will not give uh, the calories as much sugar give to us. So low calorie sweetener. So if we able to make uh, from a rice straw such a sweet thing, we can make many good products, very value added products. So such approaches, such thought process need to be required for uh, researchers to be think of in this area. So what is the benefit of the xylitol? So we, the benefit of uh, this xylitol is uh, in a multiple products, it's help in skin care, bone metabolism, digestion stimulation. It's also antioxidant. It's generally used in oral health cares like uh, chewing gums, uh, toothpaste, and uh, mouthwashes, etc. So when we see the global xylitol market, the from 2021 to 2029, if we see, so around the CHGR will be going to increase 5.3%. And it will be in the region analysis is also been going to be an increase. So the segments in this applications are singum, confectionery, food and beverage, personal care, pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, any other. Those xylitol is also used as for other making the polymers as well. So there are key players. They are already uh, working on this, and the major market was being uh, from the China and. Uh, 
they are uh, making via a chemical route. So this is the whole process we have developed and uh, from the rice straw and from one kg of rice straw, we can able to generate around 75 gram of xylitol. So such, uh, this is this is a one of technology and the second technology is the bioactive colors. So we know that whenever we uh, eat food or uh, we see anything, the colors attract to us. So if the colors having the other functional activity, so it will going to be benefit for a part, the color it will going to be benefit to the health as well as. So any, uh, though global market of bioactive colors are also going to be increased to 33 uh, billion USDs globally. So uh, there are several approaches for uh, uh, making bio colors one is a chemical route and some synthetic colors we generally seeing that because they are low in cost people are using synthetic colors for food systems so uh, the other is the plant from we can also extract bioactive colors from the plants plant also having many bioactive colors uh, like if we give the example tomato having the lycopene and the beetroot having the betaine so many uh, bioactive colors are there that can be extracted and the left over part of food processing industry we can use for extraction of such bio colors as well it's a good strategy and the microbes uh then because in this uh, technology, we have isolated two uh, microbes, and these microbes are generating a good amount of uh, colors, and these also having an antioxidant activity. And these uh, can be fortified into any pharma, food, beverages uh, sector, or uh, either it can be used for the textile industry and all those. And these are being made by the rice straw uh, leftover. We though the both approaches can be applied. The leftover, the, the the rice straw which has been segregated in hemicellulose and cellulose. The cellulose can be used as a carbon source for growth of this. So we some uh, bioactive colors are also being grown on these silos. So these strategies can be applied, and uh, via fermentation we can make such bioactive colors and use in different applications. The other is you can also make the leftover uh, uh, residues to cellulose derivatives like carboxymethyl cellulose. Here we have extracted the cellulose from rice straw and then make the carboxymethyl cellulose with that cellulose. And this carboxymethyl cellulose is basically emulsifier you can use in uh, paint industry to thickening. And there are several polymer industries where we are using carboxymethyl cellulose. The other uh, product which can be made from agriculture residue is a bioethanol. And in this, the government is also supporting and uh, uh, it is anticipated to grow a CAGR around 17.44% uh, to reach to uh, 10,644 million by 2027. So it's a very good approach or the initiatives uh, government is taking favoring the policies will also going to be uh, help uh, to us to make the good sustainable models. But when we see it's a very old slide of mine and so just to give an overview statistic to be make the bioethanol, how much we can able to make it. So India is generally uh, produce around 200 million metric ton annually of greens, which generate around 600 million metric of agriculture residues. And these agriculture residues can produce around 210 million metric ton per annually of cellulose. And these cellulose can be converted around 105 million metric ton of bioethanol. But the side product will also come, which is a lignin, which will also going to be a big concern. That we have to keep in mind while uh, using this strategy, we have to be uh, other plan also how we can degrade the lignin and how can we tackle because the side product will going to become lignin. 
So there are many uh, industries which are already working on ethanol productions like Punjab, Hindustan Limited, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation. Recently, they are going to be a put a very a big plant in Patinda in Punjab itself from agriculture uh, biomass only and the Tata Chemicals, Benariamar, Sugar Limited, uh, Rampur distilleries, and these are the uh, Praj industry. These are the uh, industries which I have been listed, though there are many more also. Uh, so they are working on bioethanol production. So after the side product, which is the uh, con concern in the bioprocess is the lignin. The lignin is uh, very difficult to degrade biologically. So either we need to be a work uh, on such uh, microbes or enzymes to degrade the lignin efficiently in a more uh, short duration. So because the lignin uh, energy content is 30 kilojoule per kg and which is equivalent to the 95% of energy content of ethanol. What we do uh, traditionally with the lignin, we are burning or uh, we are uh, using as a filler for the concrete dyes or other agricultural chemicals. And the product which is, because lignin, it's totally depend on the structure because when we extract the lignin, the which process we have used during the bioprocessing will going to be change the structure of lignin. So currently lignosulfates and sulfonatal craft lignin is produced majorly. And these lignins are insoluble in nature. So if the lignin can be formed into a solubilized form or we can degrade or digest it, this lignin and further we can be make any derivative or polymer can be used for uh, for wastewater treatment or many other approaches already been reported into the literatures. But there is uh, no such lignin commercialized technologies is still able to, I can see, in the literature. Though there are uh, many uh, products can be formed from the lignin, but it's also, as, as I say, it's total depend on the lignin isolation processes. So low purity lignin is abundantly available. Generally, it could be used for energy and refinery. The lignosulfonates next, and then that is a low medium, which is generally we are using as a uh, cement additives. And the craft lignin, which is high with these craft lignins, can be used for multiple uses. We can use for apart the uh, bitumen refinery. We can use for biofuel. BTX, uh, uh, butylene toluene, xylene, activated carbon, phenol resins, vanille and phenol. So these are multiple uh, products can be formed with the organosol lignin and high grade lignin also. So such, because when we are purifying the lignin, it's also increasing the cost of the process for enhancing the purity of the lignin. So we have to think how efficiently we can, a uh, low-grade lignin can be uh, valorized uh, into a high value added products. Though few startups were being uh, worldwide, if we say few startups were been working on the lignin and they are uh, making products like a lignin oil, char, gas, and they are pyr pyr uh, do uh, catalytic pyrolysis and making a pyrolysis oil, BTX, hydrocarbon gases, vanillin. So they are uh, using a catalytic approaches to degrade it and then converting into uh, good value added product. So simultaneously, uh, the good uh, hydrothermal or catalytic, which has to be a sustainable and efficient uh, conversion of lignin need to be a figure out and then, but sim if we are going for the bioprocessing, we have to be a think of the lignin and the lignin has to be figured out to be a best to degrade via biological route. If not, then we have to figure out the other route. The, uh, uh, this is also a, one of the good uh, example in bioprocessing of agriculture residue is a bio CNG and uh, the major concern in this uh, area is we have to design the reactors and these reactors to able to handle the agriculture residue for because agricultural residue is in a nature of having uh, floating nature basically so we need to be uh, this residue uh, we need to treat this residue and make it into the form so it will not be a float it will hydrolyze in a equal manner or we can get the efficient bio cng so this is the pictures of uh, iit delhi uh, this is a uh, base, uh, 
uh, biogas bottling system where we have producing uh, uh, bio uh, biogas and then further we are purifying with the scrubbers and able to uh, make it into the uh, vehicle fuel and the, uh, this is the uh, i mean this is a live model but still the, uh, the vehicles are running on the bio engine IoT. the next concern agriculture residue is food residues so how the food residue can be converted into value added products so the food agricultural residues uh, are like the leftover of uh, food industries like cereal industry we having different food uh, industries like cereal industries beverages alcohol industry fruit and vegetable industry poultry sugar industry dairy industry there is uh, they are generating a huge amount of uh, food bioprocessing waste so uh, this food residues are um, come out after milling, cleaning, soaking, and there's multiple steps during the formation of the product in the industries. So these could be a solid grain, corn, uh, steep leaker, corn cob, wheat bran, solid as you spend grain syrup. It depends on from which industry is coming. If I could say food juice industry, pulp and pomace, so if I could uh, say poultry, so uh, skin, bone fat, these are the uh, basically leftover uh, of the food processing industries. So there was uh, one, uh, I've read the India waste as much food as the whole UK consumes. So we are, sorry. So we are uh, producing so much of uh, leftover in this area. So we need to figure out how to be reused and how to be uh, make these process by the industry itself to be a supportive in this to generate such products by using such uh, residues. And these residues are basically not having a very good value. So when we see uh, the stats of this agricultural uh, food processing residues, roughly one third of edible part of food product for human consumption get lost or waste globally, which is about 1.3 billion tons per year. In Asian country near every year amount of food waste could be rise 416 million tons in 2025. When we see the estimated percentage of weight according to the commodities groups, and you can easily see that in the fruit and vegetable is wasting much at the processing and packaging stage. So if we are able to uh, manage this agricultural processing uh, waste, uh, we can uh, think potentially utilizing this waste because this is somehow having a very good value. It's made from a protein, vitamin, minerals, and fibers itself. So, uh, so the proper utilization of agriculture waste and its byproduct has been has the potential to support entire industry. Also, it will increase the income value, the impl valuable employment opportunities will also be generated, and rural area will also be developed and solve the waste and environmental pollutions. So I'll share a few technologies which has been developed uh, at SEIAB. One is uh, the oligosaccharides. This, uh, these oligosaccharides has been developed from the corn fiber. This is the uh, waste uh, re residue or could say byproduct of uh, corn starch industry. In the corn, when they are making the starch from the corn, uh, they are soaking initially. And the outer coating is basically uh, one of the byproduct of the industry and they are not utilizing it efficiently. So in this technology, we have made the oligosaccharides, which are like uh, uh, prebiotic fibers and can be used for uh, nutraceutical or farm functional food products or any pharmaceutical products. And the other uh, in the starch industry uh, leftover is a corn gluten meal. When they separate the starch uh, and through the centrifuge, the one of the leftover has come as corn gluten meal, which is a protein part of the corn itself. And uh, this is this is a way having a very good percentage of protein. But there are some constraints. So we try to uh, resolve uh, in this uh, technology and be able to make it uh, 
good protein supplement and uh, it having a good percentage of lysine which is equivalent to the soya protein as well as we also prepare some uh, nanoparticle of this uh, uh, corn gluten meal and those are having a high antioxidant property so you can use such products for food nutraceutical pharmaceutical products uh, in pharmaceutical products. So the other is the concern in the Punjab is the Kinu waste. So um, he, it's a uh, Punjab is Punjab Haryana, or uh, uh, is a good gen generation of the Kinus and the good production of Kinus. And these Kinus are again further processed for different food industries to make it juices, jams, and all jelly. So the, the leftover is pomace is a huge concern for the juice industries. So we, uh, we bought this uh, kinu pomace from the Punjab agro juice industries. And further, we have developed two debittering processes. One debittering process is uh, based on the organosolvent process. Another was enzymatic base, where the naranjin is being converted into with the help of the naranjinase into the naranjin and naranjinin. So basically, the bitter compound has been converted into the non-bitter compound. And we able to make the dietary fiber out of it in the similar way by the organosolvent process. So these uh, further we have fortified these uh, dietary fibers into the vermicelli and excluded products and we prepared and this and uh, one more uh, byproduct is a whey, which is come from the dairy industry. And uh, this is a whey basically left over when they extract the paneen. In the leftover water is called as whey in the dairy and this having a very good amount of uh, protein and calcium and minerals and this so we have prepared a whey beverage by the combination of dietary fibers from the kinu pomace apple pomace and a tomato by uh, byproducts and further we uh, also license this technology to the industry the next uh, uh, residue is the mango seed and the mango seed is also after extraction of juice mango seed is also been a um, very bulk amount uh, produced and uh, they this seed have one kernel inside this which having um, uh, fat which is called as a mango butter so we have extracted this uh, mango butter and see that we prepared or derived uh, the a mango butter from the mango seed kernel, which is substituting the cocoa butter for preparation of chocolate. So this approach is going to be helped because we are uh, taking the cocoa butter from the outside countries. So the, this will also be going to be decrease the load of uh, taking from outside. We can also generate our own uh, cocoa butter substitute at our country. No, these were few examples I have given, uh, which are, we were also working, our whole institute is working on such a good uh, uh, technology, so bioprocessing. So there are several other approaches also apart this, and we can be, need to be potentially implemented in the our, in our country and uh, which will also going to be uh, reduce, reduce and recycle this agricultural residues and we also make a circular economy by uh, bioprocessing such agricultural residue in a sustainable way. So in the end, I want to say that the value addition of byproduct uh, it's highly required and the agriculture and uh, food processing waste can be used by uh, integrated approach and used for value added products like salt or pigment nutraceutical so on these were the few examples along with the energy prediction in form of bioethanol biomethane biohydrogen at economic value for a rural people or a farmer so such strategies is required for a circular bioeconomy development. And the valorized product from food processing residue like a fiber-rich, protein-rich supplements or 
uh, nutraceuticals uh, can be distributed to the children through midday meals schemes, which can provide healthy and nutrient rich food to the combat malnutrition. So simultaneously energy, we can also see uh, the health and nutrition of our country and small scale industry setup can be provided with the training to empower the women thus provide them income source. So those uh, the skill can be developed in this area so they can also start their own businesses and that can help to our country to be de developed economic. And the value addition of byproducts of food process industry along with the agricultural practices leads to increase the corporate income of farmers as agriculture in main economic source. So they are under following the government is already supporting a lot and in such programs, such entire technologies can be helpful for rural development to develop our whole nation, like mission of integrated development of horticulture, midday meal scheme, rural entrepreneurship development program, integrated child development services, digital India program, national program for rural industrialization, micro and small uh, enterprises, cluster development programs, and many uh, tech, um, programs which has been given by the MNREs. Uh, with uh, this, I want to say uh, thank you. Thank you for patiently yeah. listening to me. And uh, it's open for question and discussion. Please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Meena. It was a very detailed presentation. You covered all aspects of all waste products, including agriculture residues, you gave up most about the waste products from the food industry and it was a very good coverage and I could link myself with the fermentation technology and the, you know, I used to do winemaking courses and all during our masters and of course, even PhD, we did the rhizobium culture. So all the, these products have a, you know, link everywhere and microbes, of course, they're our best friends. I always used to say that. So we have two questions. After that, I will ask you one mine. One is from Dr. Shinivas, and uh, both the questions are more or less the same. And I would also like to gel into that. Are these technologies ready for scale up? You know, uh, they, because... See, you showed bicolor and you showed about xylitol. Okay. There, have you patented those technologies or yes, what is the, the level of readiness yes, yes. of these technologies? Yes, ma'am, we have secured the patents. And uh, these technologies has been developed at lab scale. So uh, those who are interested can be further, we can uh, consult and support them and they can take the okay. technology from our institute and we are, we are ready to transfer. Okay. So we will uh, disclose everything of whoever is interested, mm -hmm. but they are uh, developed at a lab scale right now. Okay. What are what the investments required? Uh, because what kind of project funds are required? And of course, how will you resolve this problem of Punjab? I'll come to that later on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so basically, uh, they, it's a very big question to be, uh, a little bit, uh, not a good platform to be a judge uh -huh. or saying uh, very harsh things. So uh, I want to say that these technologies has been uh, developed from a uh, rice straw. So it's uh, totally depend on the agricultural residue you are using to convert. So which agriculture residue you are using? So if we you want to uh, know the cost of your tech or, or for this technology, first you have to give this give ex what exactly you are planning. So somewhere that we have to club to two steps, sometimes we have to segregate two steps, sometimes so it's depend on first we have to figure out the details, then we will give though it will be a if we compare to the chemical route because chemical route it's been converting by RNA nickel and uh, it having giving a many carcinogenic byproducts. If we compare with that, it's a very good and sustainable and long uh, way to go model for a xylitol. But in the cost wise, a little higher because you need uh, extra because to take care of maintaining of microbial culture you need extra things so slightly higher but it was being a competitive price so punjab problem to i think i want to make a comment here in fact i want to compliment we can say that the the efforts made by the government i was reading that this year's double burning was 30 percent less even nasa less. has regarded 30 percent less the number of fires were less yeah. so that is a good thing 
and uh, what about, about the pusa pusa method i am from pusa my phd yes. from iri microbiology you know department of microbiology so okay. i was very happy when they had come across some solution to this double burning how do you feel what what is that is it just a microbial inoculum or is it that they have a mixture of something which they are doing what 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 is that pusa kit what do you say yeah doing? exactly what yeah they having a very uh, consortia of microorganisms so they claiming that with the help of that uh, consortia with the uh, jaggery you have to inoculate it and it will be degraded the rice straw agriculture residue will be degraded. okay it is this 15 days 20 days sufficient time to degrade yeah, but it was. But then, what about the lignin? See, lignin is yeah, the most that's, difficult. That's the concern. We, I, I did. I also had a lot of. I did my PhD also on all this agriculture thing. You know, so we did. We used to pulverize, and then of course pre-treatment for lignin, and then only you can put it in the fermenter or you can go it. So I feel lignin may not be degraded. Yeah, yeah. It's I very difficult. difficult. It's very difficult. Even though when you are using a very good potential microbes, it'll take a long time to degrade it. Yeah. So you you don't have that time for the industries. I could say they, they think in point of view making money so fast. So mm. to degrade degradation, because the government selflessly they are putting extra effort to do that. But when when we think in the prospect of the industry, they are they think in different point of views so uh, the lignin is really challenging and we really want to work on this and uh, we should take out such uh, technologies or we so should develop enzymes? such technologies you have not developed any enzymes for lignin hydrolysis or there are enzymes also no? which can yeah there are lacases enzymes are which are helped to degrade but they are taking too much of time so some hmm. i think some uh, technology need to be, uh, I think, develop or even though we, whatever enzyme we have, we need to be upgrade them or in the, we can be made by a genetic engineering or by the help of any uh, uh, immobilization. We need to make them potentially to degrade because lignin will going to be a very huge amount if we go yes. for the uh, bioprocessing strategies. Yes. Yes. So that by that we need to be handled because mm -hmm. now we are uh, we know that this is a very good model and sustainable model for uh, treating the agricultural residue by a bioprocessing approach. But the side side product which is difficult to degrade will be going to one one of the concern. It and if the take, other productivity of the other crop, next crop, yeah, you know, yeah, that is so, right. So before I ask you another question, there, Mr. Khatri, uh, Mr. Ram, can you give the rights to Mr. Khatri? He wants to ask a question. Mr. Khatri is with us with Skill Council. He is ex-ITDC, doing a lot of work on sustainability. So, Mr. Khatri, please. Yeah, he has the permissions now. Yeah, yeah, please. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Meena, your presentation was an audio and a visual delight. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a doctor like you. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate the nuance of how to convert waste into wealth in so many different forms. My short question is, every year in October and November, we see TV fights on pollution and nobody talks about this positive development. Why aren't you putting up this in the public domain so that more industries take interest in this? Yes, yes. Though it was been already, uh, we have uh, uh, on our website, we have put all the technologies. Though uh, now the government, as ma'am already said, the Punjab government is doing excellent. The 30% reduction was already been noticed. So I think efforts are still continuing and uh, soon because uh, we were putting our technologies on the website and we are all wherever we go and we deliver. But, but I, I agree with Mr. Khatri. You have to put more efforts for more dissemination of this you have you know this lab to field that is the basic problem we do so much work yeah, in the yeah. lab and we are not able to connect with the actual person people who require it so mm -hmm. i feel this connect I, you should uh, talk in your you know biotechnology is also a very you know, forward looking department so mm -hmm. there are so many field programs where you can you know connect with the farmers and I think there are so many organizations and farmers are also very proactive. You can see the change in the cropping patterns. The way I, I was doing something on mushroom cultivation, you know, using this uh, biomass, uh, biogas slurry. So they were very forthcoming. You know, I used to go, to, I have visited so many villages of Punjab. So the farmers were very forthcoming. Yes, we will use it and we will grow 
mushroom because it, it, there is a value addition. They get it is a monetary benefit. So I feel if you connect with the farmers and Punjab, basically the whole country may farmers ka network is very strong, hai, but Punjab may especially. Mm -hmm. So these technologies. I have another will, uh, yeah, humble uh, suggestion. Please yes. call the media from time to time to have a look at your products and do the kind of presentation that you've done for us. That will have a huge multiplier effect. Yes, yes. Thank you once again. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you for the suggestion yeah. and uh, a motivational word. And surely we'll try to... With your, the, what about uh, the, with your uh, help only. There are 12 bioethanol plants which are coming up. You talked only of Bathinda. What about the rest? Is, is yeah, yeah, because I, I... What about Panipat? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, yeah, Panipat is also there. So, so there, there are also, many. Yeah, yeah, there so are many well, more to come. Yeah, government yeah. is fully supporting that. I really, totally. But you know, the time period they have missed the time schedule. They could not complete it. They were, maybe because of the COVID, mm. Indian oil and HPCL and all that. You know, even the Praj people. And there is one pl plant which uh, Mr. Nakpal has put up. You know, I in Jalandhar or something. That is also for bioethanol. No. Yeah, that was all uh, bio CNG. That's bio CNG, bad. no? Yeah. Bio CNG is now taking up. Only there are issues in here regarding some land, money, finance, all same problems which they are when you scale up. Yes, yes. Yeah. But these 12 plants, I'm looking at them so that they can meet towards the ethanol, you know, yeah, increase yeah. in the ethanol capacity and we can have better solutions. Yeah. Any more questions? If there are any more questions, I can talk to her. <laughs> this has been so I'm also loving to talk to you. It has been so very, I, because you can I, totally understand what exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm it missing it, you know. See, winemaking, dairy industry, all these courses, you know, in, when I was in my master's, in fact, my PhD thesis also was for, um, you know, how bacillus serious food poisoning, you know, I collected all the samples and all that. So this is a industry where this is a field which I love. But then I went into, and like you say, Department of Biotechnology. I was in MNRE. So okay. more into renewables, biogas, and all that. But this is an area, and I feel what he's saying that you should do it, and it, it will give a real value to the work you're doing. You know, don't yeah. be hesitant. Yeah. Try to make it more simple for the farmers. Make more simple. You know, once you go, you have those extension activities. We, I don't know, our, in our masters also, we used to be taken to the villages. Yes, Mr. Khatri, please. Dr. Mm -hmm. Meena, I'll take your yes. uh, email ID and your cell number from uh, Dr. Yeah. Damija and yeah. we'll have a one-to-one sure. -one chat because I'm connected with many industries. I'll introduce you to a lot of uh, hopefully right people. Yeah. Okay? Sure, sure. I'm thank really you, glad. Thank you once again. Can you put it in the chat? I think so. You can put it in the chat for everybody if you, if you don't mind. Uh, so, okay, okay. I think uh, others also can take the benefit and interact with you. I have so many, seeing so many I people think, uh, different. Uh, I request to Vibhash. Uh, can Vibhash? you please share my details? Uh, Vibhash is there? Sarvesh? Uh, Mr. Ram? Yeah, he is there in the lobby, ma'am. Okay, okay. Please just tell uh, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Please, uh, please put her uh, email ID and mobile number in the chat. Can you just put it so that everybody takes the benefit? Yeah. It was a very wonderful presentation. Wonderful, you know. And it was really nice to connect you people. It was been because sometimes when we are in lab and we are working hard, we yeah. sometimes it was a bit difficult to be commercialize your own technology because we as a scientist, we can work and we can put our extra effort to be thinking more way of doing research. Mm -hmm. But in prospect of uh, how to be converted into a commercial level, that will be if any industry or any... You, you must be having some industry linkages. D DBT has a lot of industry connect. So, Though they, they are also helping, no issue. That that was not concern. But as per my, as per I generally I'm uh, discussing, like if as a scientist, it's sometimes we, because we need or dependent on some other one person yeah. for commercialize. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, though we, we don't have that much of knowledge for commercialization, they are calling many industries, some industry meets will also be there, we are also being going, uh, attending such meetings, and they also come to our institute for exchanging uh, knowledge. So, those things have been uh, still going on, but somehow we feel that 
the the government when the transfer of technology they also request some few technology has been transferred also and now the things have been changing now it's been towards the commercialization more interest was being generated before that it was been not that much right now this is so i think soon it will going to be a little, little uh, efforts will going to be put extra and then uh, the things will be go at another level so i feel the gap is there. like praj industries is okay they are well versed but if you say iocl hpcl their people they need more technical experts you know i feel though they have collaborations with very good companies and with very good international collaborations but some sort of local uh, you know insight also because problems are all local Mm. Even you know we in skill council we were first to attack the agro residue aggregation that that uh, you know qualification packs we have made that because we feel that stubble burning is a big problem that was what we told we were told so we made for agro residue aggregator biomass storage depot but but there was no takers there were no takers for these trainings in the people in the field how they can collect it better now after four five years. because the focus has been revisited by punjab mm -hmm. we are going to take up some skilling programs in about 23 districts through prespel prespel has come to us kanal ahuja you must be knowing him so they have come to us and they were have asking us to have 100 people trained in every district of punjab 23 districts mm -hmm. so that they can you know be they can know collect it in a better way collect it in a faster way and then of course store it also storage depot operator and of course an aggregator so these are two job roles where we have now got and we made them 5 years back 4 5 years back where we when we when the skill council was just started we thought this is a big problem so slowly slowly that awareness or linkages are there the farmers are doing they will do what they want to do na they mm -hmm. they they are dependent their livelihood is dependent on agriculture they can't wait for us to go and skill them yes true but ma'am you are really doing a excellent job the, the the platform you are giving to us and the platform giving to all the participants to no, no. listen I, and get i i knowledge. feel that we are like we should connect more we should have more we were like you with so, us you know we are going to we are going to in fact try to create some sort of a video library or something like that where with all the speakers good such good 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 speakers you know i can't i think mr khatri will <laughs> he was also one of the good speakers who sp spoke on sustainability practices so these are things which are required and this is one way of dissemination right yeah and i think mr subhash have you put it no I... hello sarvesh are you there yes ma'am i am here give a, a mobile number or email id dalna kya mushkil hai chat mein uh... I, I need to oh, check no, no. Ek, just a minute tum dal do na then we can uh, wish her all the best and thank her once again because i want ab ho jayega to ho jayega nahi to fir nahi hoga dal do isko sorry for no it's not my mind and her mobile also if you have no objection na for your mobile no 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 ma'am okay. yeah so Yeah, yeah. Somebody has asked you, can you put some light on Delhi pollution control? <laughs> control. So <laughs> diesel cars are banned, है ना? Nowadays construction yes. activity is banned. So please. Can you answer, yeah, yeah. So actually, the government itself doing a very great in Delhi, though as we can see in by the graphs and this data. So okay. they are uh, doing uh, obviously uh, blending of uh, petrol is one of the concern they have uh, already announced, and uh, they are alternative car and the ten years is the uh, vehicle uh, they have uh, made it. for the validity for the vehicle so they are doing it very good in that or those several other to protection ke liye bhi they have developed many technologies like they have nozzle filters and many so not a part the rules and regulations or the policies they have also been promoting the technologies for to protect so both the i think both side was been doing great and uh, i think soon we will going to be yeah. uh, see there is a good. there is a circular from the pollution control board that by september 2022 most of the uh, industries in the ncr regions they have to shift to biomass based fuels whether they do bio cng or, or png or they do it to pellets 
So otherwise, those industries will be closed uh, closed down. See, industry also is facing a lot of problems now. See, yeah. they, they are polluting, but at the same time, they have to look for alternatives which are slightly economically they should be beneficial to them. They should be viable. So this sort of is there. Then pellets, five percent pellets in all the thermal power plants. You know, I was there in Delhi government, and it was we. There were instructions to close down Rajpath, that uh, uh, power plant, coal based, but it never. Got closed during my tenure because the g- gas was not available. So I think now they have closed it. So coal slowly, slowly. We can't just close down everything. Close down, yes. We, that just transition has to be there. You know, phasing out has to be there. We can't just switch over to those systems where we are not so confident and where we are not so financially strong. I, I this is my this thing. So everything has to go parallel. You know. Yes, yes. Yeah. I agree. So nice talking to you. You know. And yes, we will invite exactly. you for some other topic also. <laughs> you know, oh, sure. so we can contribute. You know, yeah, and sure. thank you very much. It was a very, you know, it was a very enthusiastic, you know, and a very what you can say. You can use a better word. Interaction <laughs> is a very small word for it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank uh, he you. He said the thank visual you. delight. Yes. He used two words that they were the right words. Thank you one once again and uh, have a nice day. You know. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Wish you same. Thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar.